Good day everyone, it's Lazy Sunday. I've just done all my talking to all my children, this and that. Now I have some time to do my Bible video. Oh my gosh. What a weekend it has been. I couldn't be happier or more excited about things. It's like, ah! Oh, it's been so busy. <laughs> so my youngest daughter was here. We got things going up there, junking things out, this and that. Now it's ready for me to clean it and get it back together to just me and my style. Yes. It was, I was so happy to hear she, when she came, I showed her the stove room what I don't all in there and got the nicest, most appreciative and loving response. You guys can imagine. She said, mom, I love it. It feels like you again. It feels like home again. This was one thing I would come and it's like, it just didn't feel so much like home again. And here, there is you. It's like, <laughs> I loved her response. It's, that is, was so wonderful. And uh, to hear. And, and, uh, and then uh, uh, last night we went to uh, the uh, award ceremony that uh, three different outfits have here for people in the county of the year so she was the young person got the young person award right of the year here in our county wonderful little little uh award ceremony and the testimonies of people about other there were, it wasn't just her there were other people as well with different things best business and the the most amazing couple you know and, and helping people in the county this and that and then there was also a uh, serviceman was uh, uh, was honored, you know, and uh, and his story and all that. And then there was a teacher that all of my four children had in school, uh, chemistry and physics, and she is the uh, most amazing woman. All my children loved her. And she had this just amazing way with children. Anyway, so, and then uh, <clears throat> who else was there? And uh, uh, a doctor, a uh, lady doctor, who uh, has delivered now in a fairly short amount of time she's been here, over 1,800 babies. Yeah. And... The testimonies about and how she cares for the moms and the babies and this snap before and after and make sure you know everything goes well and if there is always just amazing amazing just amazing people all of them honored in a way that you know the people were in unison in unity they deserved all deserve these awards. Huh? Isn't that great? Yes. Yes, there are many more people too. Huh? You have to choose one every year, right? Yes? Okay. On each category or whatever. So, wonderful. It was wonderful. The food was great, I have to say. And uh, just really, really pleasant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very proud parent I am. <laughs> Very proud citizen of this community as well all right so then I had just a really amazing talk with my another daughter who's getting ready to move into their new home yes and uh, whew, uh but it was a great had a great great conversation with her so here we are now I'm ready for Samuel too <laughs> Let's get going. Yes. So we are in 2 Samuel 2. David, king of Judah, is the overhead. 
David consecrated king at Hebron. <clears throat> After this, David consulted Yahweh, asking, Shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah? Yahweh replied, Go up. Which one shall I go to? David asked. To Hebron was the reply. So David went up with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, widow of Nabal of Carmel. In addition, David brought up the men who were with him, each with his family, and they settled in the towns of Hebron. The men of Judah came, and there they anointed David as king of the house of Judah. Hmm. All right. David's message to the people of Jabesh. They told David that the people of Jabesh in Gilead had given Saul burial. So David sent messengers to the people of Jab Jabesh in Gilead. May you be blessed by Yahweh, he said, for showing this faithful love to Saul, our lo your Lord, and for burying him. Ha ha. Did you guys catch this? I'm just saying this is how it's written down. He said, for showing his this faithful love to Saul, your Lord, your Lord. And now may Yahweh show faithful love and constancy towards you. I too shall treat you well because you have done this. And now take courage and be men of valor. Saul, your Lord, is dead. But the house of Judah has anointed me to be their king. I find it interesting that not the whole of Israel was, eh? yes, I, I guess they didn't have the voting system at the time. So who chose David as the king? Just one part of Israel? Shouldn't all the people of Israel be included? Well, God sent him, did he? Okay, all right. Let's go with that. Abner imposes Ishbal as king of Israel. Oh. Hey, wait a second. We got a little conflict going on here. Before I read that. <clears throat> Now, wait a minute. Who was Abner? I'm not going to go all the way back through here, but wasn't Abner Saul's... Oh, no, that was Abia. No, that was the priest. Okay, well, let's not get into something that I'm not sure about, but I might have to go and check that out. Abner, I thought, was, okay, so it's Saul's army commander. <clears throat> so that was not the armor bearer then. Okay, let's, let's leave it at that. Abner, son of Ner, Saul's army commander, had taken Ishbal, son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. Oh, he had another son. Saul had more than just the three that were killed. He had made him king of Gilead, of the Asherites, of Je Jezreel, of Ephraim, of Benjamin, and indeed of all Israel. Ishbal, son of Saul, was 40 years old when he became king of Israel, and he reigned for two years. Only the house of Judah supported David. The length of David's reign over Judah in Hebron was seven years and six months. Oh, interesting. They had two kings at one time. <laughs> well, at least they didn't have three popes. Okay. <laughs> there we go. This is such a mess. And it, an interesting thing is it doesn't say, so we know that David asked Yahweh. So should I go there? Yeah, go there. Where exactly? Go there. Okay. But we don't hear anything that, how did Abner decide well because it was Saul's son right so the succession of it would be okay but it doesn't say anywhere anything did they consult any of the uh, priests in that on what Yahweh if that's would be Yahweh's desire okay well all right. 
Here we go. Infighting starts now. War between Israel and Judah, the Battle of Gibeon. Abner, son of Ner, with the retainers of Ishbal, son of Saul, marched out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. Joab, son of Zeruiah, Zeruiah, with David's retainers, also took the field, encountering them at the pool of Gibeon. It doesn't say anywhere the reason for why they suddenly did that. Because of, okay, it doesn't say. There they halted, one party on one side of the pool and the other opposite. Abner then said to Joab, let the men come forward and fight it out between us. Joab replied, let them come forward. So they came forward and were numbered off, 12 from Benjamin for Ishbal, son of Saul, and 12 of David's retainers. Each cut his opponent by the head and drove his sword into his side, and thus they all fell together. Hence the place was called the Field of Sides. It is at Gibeon. That causes an odd picture in one's head, so nobody won. They all died. What a waste of 24 good men. Just because. It's like a chessboard, right? Oh, okay. Just with living people. That day, a very fierce battle took place, and Abner and the men of Israel were beaten by David's retainers. The three sons of Seruiah were there, Joab, Abishai, and Azahel. Now Azahel could run like a wild gazelle. <clears throat> Azahel chased Abner, not swerving to the right or left from pursuing him. Abner turned and said, Azahel, is that you? He replied, it is, Abner said. Turn to your right or your left, catch one of the men and take his spoil. What? Oh. But Azahel would not break off the pursuit. Again, Abner spoke to Azahel, stop following me unless you want me to strike you to the ground. And then how could I look your brother, Joab, in the face? <laughs> That's, what? But he refused to be diverted, so Abner struck him in the belly with the butt of his spear so that the shaft came out through his back. Oh, golly. And he fell at his feet and died on the spot. On coming to the place where Azahel had fallen and died, everyone halted. <clears throat> Joab and Abishai took up the pursuit of Abner, and at sunset reached the hill of Amah, which is, the, is to the east of Giah, on the road through the desert of Gibeon. The Benjaminites gathered in close formation behind Abner and halted on the top of a hill. Abner called out to Joab, Is the sword to go on devouring forever? Surely you see that this can only end in bitterness. How long will it be before you order those people to stop pursuing their brothers? <laughs> Joab replied, As Yahweh lives, if you had not spoken, these men would not have given up the pursuit of their brothers until morning. Joab then sounded the trumpet, and all the troops halted. They pursued Israel no further and fought no more. All that night, Abner and his men made their way through the Arabah, they crossed the Jordan and marching throughout the morning came to Mahanaim. Joab, having stopped pursuing Abner, mustered the whole contingent. David's retainers had lost 19 men in addition to Azahel, but had killed 360 of Benjamin, Abner's men. They took up Azahel and buried him in his father's tomb, which is at Bethlehem. Joab and his men then marched throughout the night, reaching Hebron at daybreak. That's the end of two. <clears throat> well, well. So now the infighting has started. Well, it's already been going on before that. Interesting that being on the losing side, Abner decides that to appeal right, to Job's conscience about killing his own people. 
don't you think it's interesting on how it just goes one way often? <laughs> what if Joab would have started to lose and they would be running? Would Abner have spared them? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know, right? Yes? Yeah. Uh... It's a man's world. Cannot doubt that God has very little to do with any of that. Anywho, that is it from so many thousands of years ago. Uh, and such a classic story on how <clears throat> kings and emperors, even queens, leaders of just many different kinds do not gain their position by... Um, Truly being chosen, right? But through bloodshed. Killing, murder, torture, who knows what else. Well, I guess we'll see as the story continues what else is going to happen next. Uh, one thing I miss here continuously is the communication. Right? Everybody's good with a sword and a spear and a bow and arrow and all that, but there seems to be very little communication actually going on. Right? Yes. If David has such skills, to communicate with God and even getting answers, specific answers back. Why are these conversations so short? Yeah. Oh, we hear a whole exchange between Abner and one of Joab's sons. What was his name? Can't remember now. Yeah. Who runs like a gazelle? Oh, I'm coming after you. Abner says, "Don't, don't do that." Can you? Yeah. Whole little conversation going on there, right? Yes. Not sure why we need to know that. Could have just been, hey, <laughs> right? Oh, because Abner is uh, trying to, no, don't, no, no, just, all right, just saying. Right? Yet the conversation between David and Yahweh, God, right, is so short. Is that what's going on? Right? It doesn't say, said, okay, so I'm going to go to Hebron. So do you want me to go to war with the rest of the Israelites? I don't hear that. We don't hear that exchange, right? On why. Right? Was it Abner who was already marching against them? And and they said, well, we got to do something too. And yet again, seems like Abner, right? Abner was the one telling Joab, right? Hey, yeah. you sure you want to keep killing your bro own brothers? Yeah. Well, if he knows that and has that kind of consciousness about it, and conscience about it, then he should, one should be able to talk to him too about all this, right? Before people start killing each other. Hmm? No, I don't know. I wasn't there. Okay. Just reading, wondering about it. Right? And what really went on there actually. And how little God was taken into consideration. Now the Israelites fighting each other. Killing each other. What is one of the commandments? Thou shalt not kill. I have no doubt. God looks and goes, wait a minute, these are all my anointed people. Supposed to be. They're killing each other now. 
and I'm supposed to be taking sides here? I don't know. What if one gives God a bit of a chance to see his view in all this, right? Yes? Or is it then very convenient instead of reading the Bible in a congregation from the beginning? And then you have to be there every time, right? You got to know every time. So what was the next part of it? And really know the Bible that when you get to this point, you're going to say, wait a second. But it's very convenient to just take one little part out of it and not know the rest of it. And then kind of make one's own story around it then to make it okay. Yes? Disregarding God's guidance up to then. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. So interesting on how actually David did eventually become king. Okay, well, that's it. That's all I have to say today. I've got to go. I know it's Lazy Sunday, but I have a little bit of work to do. I really, really, really like to. Yeah? Yes? Get some. I got to I got a vacuum up some dust up there. <laughs> I just do. <laughs> anyway, so that is it. Happy Lazy Sunday, everyone. Ah, oh, God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. Yes? not always yes that takes a little understanding yes a little knowing of the whole picture yes yes okay and i will talk to y'all another time <laughs>